In May of 2010, the board of directors held a visioning session. They were asked to define the ideal Meals on Wheels program. Fresh Meals on Wheels is the result. The Meals on Wheels board gathered uh, t for a special meeting, a visioning session, to talk about the uh, sort of the state of the union of the program. We wanted to decide what was good about the program, what could be improved about the program, and uh, all with a focus on how we can best serve our clientele. And in the beginning of my term, uh, we had started talking about a visioning process. And uh, we thought we wanted to really take a look at where Meals on Wheels was going to be in the next uh, five years, ten years, and beyond. And uh, we were told to think big, uh, so it was kind of interesting. Uh, the first process uh, was over at the bank, and we kind of went through this, these flow charts and spent a lot of time uh, just trying to determine where we want to be and how we want to get there. And in that process was birthed not only the idea of um, providing our customers and our clients, our friends, uh, more fresh food, um, but we also got to the point we talked about, well, we can do that better if we had a building. So as a conservative, I got very nervous but we had an incredible board, as we always do in Meals on Wheels. We're blessed with a very quality board and an outstanding staff. And we all put our heads together, and without going into a lot of detail, we uh, start shopping for buildings. We talked about fundraising, and through Dennis Ohl, who I succeeded as president, and John Rumley, who followed me, those two guys really did the work. They were out there with Kelly, beating the bush, finding buildings, and uh, finally came up with what we ultimately decided to purchase and close on. The board voted to um, essentially execute the plan that we had talked about in our visioning session a year previous and an opportunity came up for a uh, building that we could uh, essentially transform into um, what we had envisioned, which was a better way to serve our customers and the community with meals that are going to be more healthy, prepared um, locally, and, and have a, a place to do it. And we cast a uh, vote to purchase a a building and start the process and to start a fundraising campaign that would help pay for uh, this project and it was it was exciting because it was everything we had talked about in our visioning session was starting to come to fruition and it was um, it was it was something that we had spent a lot of time talking about but now we could actually do something about it it was a very interesting process as we began to decide on a location for our new facility we considered bare ground and whether we should start from scratch with the building or whether we should acquire an existing building and remodel it. We looked at sites all over the, the, the community uh, from the north side to the south side of Sheboygan and, and spaces in between. One of the driving concerns for us was price. Uh, this is a program that wants to be very conscious of costs and do things in a very uh, cost sensitive manner but we were also very sensitive to location because we wanted to find a location that would be amenable to all of our volunteers. Not too far north, not too far south, uh, a place where there was easy access in and out, a place where there was good parking. We located this parcel and had a very successful negotiation with the owners and resulted in buying the building at about half the price for which it was listed. The new location is so great. Um, I have been delivering meals um, in the present site for quite a few years. And, you know, it's not always been easy to get in and out to where the Watson's Vending um, location is as far as all the volunteers arriving and leaving at the same time. Whereas the new location is so great. Easy access. You can see it right there. How wonderful to have our own building with the name Fresh Meals on Wheels on the side. Uh, so it's wonderful as far as just the location and the easy access and especially for the volunteers. When I go into the new building, even before it's completely finished, I get so excited to see that um, the that the volunteers will be able to see the food and see where it's being um, made and also to have a place to rest and to gather. 
it's always felt like we've been on a little borrowed territory, that it's not really um, the Meals on Wheels program. We're sort of sneaking in, getting the food, and then delivering it to people. Whereas now, it's going to be like, oh, this is our place. We get to produce the food, make the food, and then get it out to the um, people who are receiving the meals. Hi, welcome to the new Fresh Meals on Wheels. I'm Kelly Hine, the Executive Director of Meals on Wheels of Sheboygan County, and I'm grateful to have you visiting us. I'm in our new facility on South Taylor Drive in Sheboygan, and I'm actually standing in the Bruce and Carol Grover vestibule. This facility is an homage to Sheboygan County manufacturing ingenuity. As you enter the building, the first thing that you notice is the fork. It's part of our new logo, and it was created by Saunders Cohn of KP Welding and the wonderful folks at Classic Coatings. On the floor you'll notice um, some customized mats produced locally as well by Northwoods. Joel Kiefer of Northwoods' mother was one of the original Meals on Wheels volunteers 42 years ago and he wanted to be involved in our project. The most important part of the Meals on Wheels facility is our kitchen, of course. We're now cooking meals for our Meals on Wheels clients throughout Sheboygan County. One of the things that makes this facility different than other Meals on Wheels programs is that we are cooking and baking from scratch. So this is an extremely busy kitchen. The next most important part of this facility is that it's the volunteer pickup area. Our volunteers finally get to pick up meals the same place that our, our offices are. So when volunteers come to Meals on Wheels, they again enter the Bruce and Carol Grover vestibule, and then they go through the rotary automatic doors to our volunteer pickup area. Come on in, I'll show you. This bright, spacious area is where our volunteers now get to come and pick up meals. There's plenty of room for them. It's bright, it's airy. Not only do volunteers pick up the meals here, but they have the opportunity to watch through the windows and see what's going on in the kitchen. They also have the opportunity to peek through the windows and see the, the volunteer coffee bar. Why don't I show that to you next? Joe Schmidt and Sons very generously provided the Loretta Schmidt Coffee Bar, an area where our volunteers can sit and relax for a few moments before heading out on a route, or perhaps sit down after a route and share with their friends what they experienced that particular day's delivery. So far, the thing the volunteers seem to enjoy the most is watching what's going on in our kitchen. They can see through the windows exactly what's happening as our cooks are prepping and then packaging the meals. The Christopher Family Kitchen is a one-of-a-kind facility, as far as we can tell, in the entire world. It is wonderful, and we're so grateful for the generosity that provided it. It's just interesting to peek through the windows and see what's happening. Right now, what you're, what you're watching is meals coming off of our packaging line and then going into the ovens. Those silver ovens are the carriers that volunteers are currently using as they deliver their routes. They keep the meals very hot, and we're always concerned about meal temperature, so that's important to us. You'll notice the Meals on Wheels staff peeking at the bottom of the meals as well as the top of the meals. That's because our meals are barcoded on the bottom. We do a triple check. We have two barcode spanner, scanners, and we also do a visual check of that barcode to make sure that we're getting the right food in the right tray for the right person. It's very important that we're being very vigilant, especially concerning special diets and food allergies. Each of the ovens holds the meals for one route. Each of our routes holds up to 14 meals. Our volunteers should be able to deliver those routes in less than an hour every day. Generally, we want volunteers to be able to deliver a meal in less than an hour so that they can get back to work if they are le indeed leaving work to deliver these meals. One of the other new things at Meals on Wheels are our new carriers. Rather than using foil carriers as we've done in past, we now have biodegradable trays. These trays can be heated up in the oven or the microwave and they have the benefit of having a clear cover so the volunteers and clients alike can see what's going on inside those trays, what, what's being served today. 
This is an entirely new procedure for us, obviously. We haven't had our own kitchen in past. We've been uh, blessed with a number of vendors in our 42 years, but when our board decided it was time to go forward and have our own kitchen, um, we were able to bring a whole lot of people from the community into the planning process, and that's how we got this wonderful kitchen that we have right now. It's excellent. Um, we've been cooking for all of our clients out of this facility for about four days now. It's been a, indeed been a learning experience. Um, some of our clients have been able to come in and visit the facility, which was kind of fun. This morning I had a call from one of them who wanted me to make sure that I immediately went in to tell our chef that it was the best chicken she had had in years. So that was a, you know, a wonderful little kudo for us. But we move forward. Every day there are a few new challenges and we really do accept them as opportunities to change and grow. It's been a fun time here. Those of you with a good imagination can envision the beautiful garden that is going to exist behind the Meals on Wheels building. Obviously right now we have a wonderful pile of dirt, but come spring we'll be breaking ground and putting in a gorgeous Meals on Wheels kitchen garden. Um, we'll have quite a few raised beds so that we can grow produce which can be used in our kitchen. We'll also have fruit trees and herbs. Again, all things that can be brought into our kitchen and incorporated into our clients' meals. Foodies from throughout Wisconsin have toured this kitchen and all have been so very excited by what they see. We tell every one of them that we have been tremendously blessed by the Christopher family. Without their generous half million dollar comp contribution, this kitchen never would have come to, come to be. This kitchen is really a showplace for Valrath equipment, including this massive mixer. We've been putting this to good use because we are indeed baking from scratch in this facility. This kitchen is state of the art. Not only do we have wonderful ovens and combi ovens and steamers and tilt skillets and grills and induction stoves, we also have um, wonderful equipment that was made in Sheboygan County by the Keys by Keys Incorporated of Elkhart Lake. Keys is owned by the Z family who have been delivering meals on wheels for many years. We're really grateful to them for their help. One of the local companies in town here in Sheboygan is Volrath Company and they are a worldwide player in the, in the food service equipment world. Um, they go way beyond their claim to fame of small wares. They also do some really great cooking equipment and some of it is displayed right here. Um, they were generous enough to donate uh, these induction ranges. Um, induction range is a newer technology. It's really popular in Europe and it's coming of age here in the United States. It operates uh, completely different than any other electric type stove that you may find. Um, these burners are actually electromagnets and these are rheostats. In the in induction range you use a particular type of cooking equipment that you put on there. It's got a high, it's got a carbon bottom encased in the stainless steel. And when you turn on the, the rheostat, it creates an electromagnetic pulse at very high frequency that excites the elements in the base. And the, so the cooking ware is what actually heats up. If you have a pan boiling here, you can put your hands right here on the burner and it won't burn you. It, it's, it's all inside of, the, inside of the equipment. Very efficient heats up quickly, cools off, you don't have wasted heat, you don't have wasted energy. It's an awesome piece and Volrath is very generous to donate that. And then uh, one of the comments made by the director was you can't have uh, Sheboygan Meals on Wheels and not be able to do brats and things of that nature. So Volrath also donated this, uh, this five foot char broiler for us as well. And this kitchen is designed to feed a thousand people a day. Right now we feed approximately 300 people each day. Some of those people receive two meals a day, so we can do four to 450 meals a day right now. Um, but again, we, this kitchen has been designed to feed 1,000 people a day, which equates to between 16 and 1,700 meals per day. This is our fresh food processing area. Our kitchen designer, Mike Tosca, can describe exactly what happens here. So one of my favorite aspects or features of this particular Meals on Wheels is this produce processing plant. Uh, I know it's small for a plant, but that's really kind of what it's technically called. But um, we, there is a lot of farm produce coming in here that's never had a chance to see anything. 
put the inside of a truck. So it gets brought into this particular room, which is in the back of the in the back corner of the facility. Produce comes in and it starts out over here. I mean, we have a lot of rolling tables so they can work with it a lot very easily. But it first comes to this major sink. This is where all the sun leaves come off. This is where the mud gets washed off and everything um, in this big tank. But that's not really enough to make sure that the produce is sanitized properly. So uh, this Meals on Wheels also has a state-of-the-art produce washing system. It's got its own refrigeration unit in there to maintain temperature. And it uses a, um, a cleaner for the vegetables, which is basically grapefruit juice with a couple other additives in it. So it's also something you could actually eat. Um, you, if you see on this washer, it also has a computer output. Um, it, is to, it monitors everything that uh, goes on through the process of cleaning the vegetables. Um, and once this produce is washed, like we've already mentioned, there's like 20 acres of potatoes coming in, 10 tons of carrots. Where do you go with it all? Um, Meals on Wheels wants to freeze everything and then, and then use it all throughout the year because you know, harvest ends pretty soon here. It's November right now. Um, so what we have is after everything gets washed, it has to get vacuum packed. So there's a vacuum sealer um, sitting right over here to vacuum pack everything. But before it gets vacuum packed, it has to be absolutely frozen. And so in order to do that properly, we included a blast chiller in this, in this uh, facility. So it gets washed, it gets dried, and then it goes into the blast chiller and is brought down to freezing temperatures very rapidly. So after it's been blast chilled and vacuum packed, this plant also has its own little walk-in freezer where we can pre-stage all of the frozen stuff, keep it frozen before uh, the food finds its way into the main freezer in the rest of the kitchen. Our Meals on Wheels offices were made lovely by wonderful donation from the Mayline Company, so the furnishings that you see for, throughout this facility are indeed a, uh, a gift from the Mayline Company. The other thing that's really quite lovely in this area is all the artwork. Betsy Michael, the widow of Dr. Jim Michael, provided many, many paintings in this space to make it much more beautiful. The one that we're looking at right now is entitled Square Meal, which is so appropriate. The light in this building is exceptional thanks to the Orion light tubes, which also help um, with our electric bills, of course. They also showcase yet another Dr. Michael painting. They really are beautiful. I'm Steve Schmidt, Joe Schmidt and Sons Construction Company, president of the company. And uh, we were uh, selected uh, uh, to be the general contractor for this project. And, uh, and started from day one on the project, uh, looking at uh, uh, the site, the building, and, then, uh, and helping with that process also. And then to uh, develop working with the architect uh, in uh, establishing the, the floor plan, multiple floor, floor plans, looking at different uh, manufacturing equipment suppliers uh, towards some facilities for, where uh, product or uh, this equipment was installed already. And uh, looked at too because I, I also have a passion with uh, environmental friendly buildings, green buildings, and, uh, and with uh, the board's uh, recommendation to go to more green uh, products. We used uh, um, ICF building, uh, product on the building, uh, and we're just, the whole thing with using local people, local manufacturers, uh, keeping things within the area here. Uh, we work with Mayline, uh, Kohler Company, uh, Valrath Company, and many other local suppliers of the products and the equipment that went into the building. Mayline, which is a, a locally based office furniture manufacturer, we got involved in the project uh, through my relationship with Kelly Hine, and uh, we're so proud to be part of such a great, great project. And we teamed up with Joseph Schmidt and Sons, uh, Steve Schmidt, and I kind of rolled up our sleeves and helped design a number of offices and a large conference room and some of the common areas where some more kind of cafeteria-like product is going and uh, put our list together and our two companies um, put our kind of financial backing behind this thing and were able to bring in some, I think, some pretty nice furniture for this great new space. Great. Aline Kitchen designed goes a lot further. It's a long, long list of things, more than we have time to talk about. Um, 
but lean in and of itself. It, talk, it looks at the process of getting something done with always the focus on the, on the end user. In this case, would be the person at the home receiving the meal. And um, we look at every aspect of the process, the food coming in, how it gets handled when it's in the door, how it gets cooked, how it gets packaged, the whole thing. So Mike and I call that method lean design methodology. It's not only a process where we create efficiencies in a, in a kitchen, we look for effectiveness. Um, you know, efficiencies could result in a lot of hamburgers being burned and thousands of, you know, of hamburgers being uh, fried in an hour. But if they don't taste right and they don't come you know, off the grill right or out of a microwave when they're reheated, um, you, know, you have problems. So lean design methodology really focuses to efficiencies. And in that design, it's got to be right for the employees. You know, we look, uh, I think as Mike had mentioned here, we look at uh, the ergonomics of a kitchen. So we, we look to the process, not the individual. Our kitchens, when we design them, uh, should meet uh, a standard for every employee that works there. Okay, in speaking, you know, this particular project, it's a project that would be envied uh, by many throughout the U.S. It is a, compared to a lot of projects we've done, this is a big project. Um, yet the involvement of people uh, in the local community are huge, and not only U.S. players, but worldwide players. You have Kohler, you have Volrath, uh, Joseph Schmidt, uh, Altosham, Keys that has, uh, was involved here uh, with the fabrication and uh, the hoods. Um, you've got uh, Abacus Architects. Uh, you know, I mean, the list kind of goes on and on, but, you know, you've got worldwide players right here in the community to get involved with a, a project that's just not your normal community project. Uh, this is something you could take any place throughout the, throughout the U.S. So, um, you know, the Sheboygan community is very fortunate to have those people involved with this project that brings that worldwide experience to uh, a local environment. Um, the biggest challenge was the um, the amount of technology that had to go into the whole thing. Um, took a lot of planning up front, which we were able to do. Uh, worked with a lot of different contractors, from the kitchen to the HVAC to the um, electrical. Um, you name it, everybody had to be involved. Everything that's involved in this building um, now, like many new buildings, is all based around technology. Security systems, door locks. Uh, you name it. So the biggest challenge was really putting that all together and having, um, you know, all the pieces fall in place. But uh, it went very smooth. A um, lot of upfront planning paid off uh, in the long run and, and worked out really well. I guess what surprised me the most about this is the end result. It is way more than I anticipated. I walk in here and I, I see the view out the back of the building. I see the uh, stainless steel and everything else in the kitchen area. Um, it's all overwhelming. It's m so much more than I anticipated. Uh, understanding what we can do with the fresh vegetables and just how that's, that whole process is going to work um, is just, I can't wait to see it in, in operation. I can't wait to see everything coming together. I can't wait to deliver meals out of, outside of this building and, and running and just seeing everything working. The packaging of the meals. Um, the other thing, the offices. Um, you know, it's just excellent, a great place for our people to work. And the fact that we're all in one place, that we've got one campus and everything can be done. And, and if there's a problem, it can be resolved immediately. I think just the overall concept is just unbelievable. We're so proud of this. Uh, I was talking to Kelly just recently. It's been about a year and a half since we first came up with the thought that, golly, I think we should have our own building. <laughs> Lo and behold, here we are. I think Kelly is still a little bit in shock about this, that she's got a kitchen and a cook and everything that she's got to deal with now. But uh, our, our goal in all of this was to raise the quality of the meals, to take more charge of it so that we could handle that better ourselves, have more control over our destiny, but particularly to focus on the recipients of our meals to make sure that we're giving them the very, very best that we possibly can deliver to them. These are your parents and your neighbors, and we want to treat them well. And thanks to the generosity of many of the people in this room, this is coming together very, very well. We appreciate that. If you haven't given, there's still time to give. We've still got more <laughs> there. Um, but 
thank you for being here. Thank you for helping us with this beautiful facility. Kelly, do you have a couple of words? Very, very few words, but mostly what I need to say to everybody is thank you so much for getting us to this point. As Dennis said, it's been a year and a half, and it's been an insane year and a half. Um, the board decided it would be a good idea to buy a building. It's a good time to buy. We've considered a kitchen over the years. Let's buy a building and build a kitchen. Yay. Um, so <laughs> that would be fine, just wonderful. But they also encouraged me to dream. If you could do whatever you wanted to do, what would you do? This is the, this is the actual embodiment of my dream. This facility showcases the best of Sheboygan County. The manufacturing and ingenuity is all on display here. We have really been tremendously blessed by all of you. All of you are here because you've had some sort of substantial involvement in this project. Um, none more so than Mr. Christopher. Jay Christopher has been um, incredibly kind to Meals on Wheels and to me as we've gone through this process and beforehand. He's actually the first person who said about two years ago, hey, you want a kitchen? And he said, no, I don't want a kitchen. I really don't want to be. Let's start with a truck. It's a little, you know, that was a big enough deal. But he has been um, such a stalwart supporter of all we've done. He's had his hand on the design of this project, um, giving wonderful feedback. So extremely grateful to him and his wonderful family. Thank you so much, Jay, for making this possible. Thank this you. kitchen is tremendous. Thank you. All right, congratulations to the, to the board, you know, to uh, Kelly, to the community. I mean, this is just a great program for the community that's going to be you know, out there for years and years to come. I think that's the, the beautiful thing. When you think about, you know, I'm at that age now where I'm starting to think, boy, how am I going to take care of myself? And what kind of meals am I going to be able to cook? And to think that uh, I could reach out to this organization and have meals to get me through the week and, and the weekend is just a, a great feeling. So I really congratulate the entire Sheboygan County community uh, for what they've been able to accomplish. And I know that that little amount that we need to raise yet will be coming in the doors very quickly and uh, no debt and we'll be off and running. Okay. times on projects uh, at last minute things come up that uh, I think uh, I was contacted by Kelly regarding the coffee bar that uh, the, the volunteer that was going to put this together wasn't able to do this and I said I'd be I'd love to take care of it I got so involved in this project that it's a uh, it's one of those projects that you really get excited about so we uh, had our people in the shop uh, our John Tuma, who was a very skilled craftsman, came up uh, with kind of the, a mutual uh, concept for it and built what you see here today, which is going to be hopefully enjoyed by many visitors and volunteers uh, that are going to be coming into the Mills on Wheels uh, site here. So, My name is Betsy Jones Michael. I'm standing in the remarkable new building of Meals on Wheels in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. It has been my pleasure to donate some of my late husband, James Michael's, paintings for the opening of this new, wonderful facility and their colorful walls. Our community is proud to be a provider of good food in this new era for Meals on Wheels. <laughs> 